any hopes for them and gave Ricky Carmichael his 19th straight national win. After a two-week break, the series now heads to the hallowed grounds of Red Bud Track and Trail for the 30th running of the Red Bud National. And we welcome you to Buchanan, Michigan. This is round number six of the Chevy Trucks AMA US Motocross Championship. And welcome to Buchanan, Michigan for the Scott USA National. Todd Harris along with the champ David Bailey and Cameron Steele. And we've got a great day of racing on hand for you today in the 250 class. David, it is hot and humid and everyone is still chasing Ricky Carmichael. And he has the advantage, Todd, being from Florida and training in all that heat and humidity. It feels like that out here today, and you can tell by the record number of easy-ups in the spectator areas. He's got a 53-point lead over second place in Kevin Windham, and Kevin Windham has shown some promise, but right now it has been and remains the Ricky Carmichael show in the 250 class. Carmichael already with four victories here at Red Bud as he gets set for moto number one. We talked to him earlier, and mission number one is winning the title. I want to go out there and uh, try to get a good start. You know, the track is uh, really wet today. We had a lot of rain yesterday, so it's going to be really important, especially with the four strokes. Uh, they got a, a, an advantage today with it being deep like that. So uh, it starts very important. And uh, just try to win some races and, uh, you know, try to build on my points lead. That's the main thing. As far as the streak goes, hey, if, if, it, if it stays alive, that's great. But if not, uh, we want to try to win the championship. So Ricky Carmichael all about winning the championship. Timmy Ferry trying to get back on top of the podium, which he has done this year, David. He has the ability. He got a great break in round number five. Well, he did, and he was holding Ricky off, no problem, at Bud's Creek. Then Ricky went down. Then he had a nice cushion. Then he had something happen to his silencer, which is why the bike sounded funny. That was the scene as the checkered flag fell. Carmichael made up all the time, but Ferry finally got a moto win. So Timmy Ferry has the momentum there. Moments ago, he caught up with our Cameron Steele. Well, folks, we're loading the gate for the 250 motor number one. And, well, check it out. Red Dog hanging out with me. Last week, Red Dog on fire motor number one. Didn't get a chance at motor number two due to a crash. What was the difference last week in the first moto? And you feel it carrying on into this? Oh, for sure. You know, I'm kind of getting back up to speed and a little better shape. And uh, the starts are coming. And I got a good start that moto, and that made it easy on me to uh, to get in front of Ricky. The track was kind of one line, and you know, anytime he came beside me, I just kind of moved over a little bit. And hopefully, I get another start today and uh, have a little better second moto. A lot of racers talk about when you get that first win of the year, or you haven't won in a while, like kind of lifts you up and makes you feel like I can do this. Did you get that feeling at all? I mean, do you feel different coming into this event? Oh, uh, for sure. You know, we had two weeks off, or two weekends off, and. Uh, I worked on some speed, a little bit of speed and then some endurance and uh, came into this race uh, rested and ready to go. So This is my favorite track on the circuit and uh, looking forward to good results here. Right on. Well, he's ready to go. Red Dog and Stefan Ricotta is about ready to run over my cameraman, so I'm going to send it back up to you guys. And that is why Cameron Steele is one of the highest paid pit reporters, staying in front of Ron Cotta. That's tough. As we look at the Suzuki starting grid, there is Carmichael and the usual suspects, Kevin Windham, Tim Ferry. Talk about the four strokes today, David. Cameron touched on a little bit, as did Ricky Carmichael. Do you see a big advantage for the four strokes? Well, if they do get off the start, which is really deep plowed right now, and there's the four stroke and David Villeman and then Morocco on a two stroke. He rode a four stroke last year. We'll see how those guys come off the gate. That should tell us a little something, but I think they have an advantage in all the deep spots, but after the first two laps, it usually gets pushed a little bit, the lines form, and, and Ricky Carmichael goes to work. There is the culprit, 82% humidity and 90% chance of late showers. Hopefully we'll get our two motos in, 87 degrees right now, but we are set to go racing. We are sideways, and we are at Red Bud. Right in the middle of the screen, number 22 on the Yamaha, Chad Reed just hooking up the bike perfectly, and he will pick up the whole shot here in moto number one. Unbelievable for a two-stroke to get the whole shot. As deep as that start was plowed, you expect to see a lot more four-strokes up front. LaRocco getting a great start. So maybe the, the lightweight. I don't know what's going on right there, but that definitely was a surprise. Ricky Carmichael is sitting in fourth place right now, and his nemesis from the Supercross Series, Chad Reed, is your leader. 
and Reed David looks just on fire. Here's a, what we expected to see through him throughout the year, and it seems like it's taken him five or six rounds to really get a feel of the motocross tracks. Here he is today getting the whole shot and going out in moto number one. Looking excellent right now. Already got a little cushion. You see a couple riders back there before you get to Carmichael. That's going to help him pull away. Of course, one of those being Kevin Windham doesn't help that much, but as long as there's a rider between Reed and Windham and Ricky, Reed should be able to break free a little bit. Just hopefully establish some kind of a rhythm before they can get on his tail. And the reason I sound confident that they're going to do that is because they've been able to do it so far this season every time. Windham's already through. Carmichael follows him. Clark Styles is like, what did just happen there? So right now, as we get things started here in moto number one, number 22, Chad Reed is your leader. Number 14 on the Honda, Kevin Windham is in second. And number four, Ricky Carmichael, the defending champ, now sits in third. They're yeah, really getting a lot of air off that big tunnel jump now, moving the landing out a little farther. Great place for the spectators to watch. And although the track is deep, you just saw a little bit of it there. Kevin found some. It looks like it's in great condition. I mean, we've been so lucky with weather so far this in the outdoor season with Muddy tracks on Saturday and perfect tracks for racing on Sunday. The humidity is high here in Buchanan, Michigan. The temperature is as well. Hydration certainly a key. And Kevin Windham is just firing it up on that four-stroke. Ricky Carmichael now starting to close in. And you think that Kevin and Chad would just love for once to have Ricky buried back at about 17th place. Just be able to ride up front for a little while without all the nerves and the pressure and the antagonizing 250 sound he is all over the clutch in the corners he, he, there's no mistake when Carmichael's behind you you know it's him Ricky Carmichael choosing the same line right now ironically is Kevin Windham Kevin on the big four stroke and Stefan Roncada Suzuki's hopes of the 250 has gone down and out. It looks like he has suffered a serious injury in his mouth. I hope his teeth are all still there. Well, he got all mixed up off the start. I couldn't tell who it was, but it looked like right away. Maybe maybe a KTM rider got together, so he didn't even make it to the first turn. As they come into the corner, Chad Reed goes very wide, and Kevin Windham sees an opening, and he takes it. Can Carmichael get there as well? No. So it's Windham in first, Reed in second, and Carmichael in third. And look at Ricky, here he comes again. That's a pretty big miscue by Chad Reed to go that wide. He almost let Ricky by as well, set that up. Everyone getting a tear off, and it is Wyndham in first, Carmichael in second, and Chad Reed. Oh, how his fortunes have changed. He went from first to third, David, in a matter of 50 yards. You know, it's, it's almost like he didn't want to take the inside. He just comes into the outside and know it. You can hear the crowd into it. He had to know those guys were right there. And at this point, he's in no man's land. I don't know what he's doing clear out there. He's probably thinking the same thing, going, I know, David, I was trying to hold it tight, <laughs> but I came in a little hot. Right here, he knows he needs to dive between those guys, but watch Ricky just forcing Chad out wide. Doesn't make contact, but just lets him know. Like I said, when, you, when Carmichael's behind you, you know it. So Kevin Windham continues to lead Ricky Carmichael right behind him, and they're starting to put a serious gap on Chad Reed, which surprises me because Chad looks so good, and Windham goes down. Kevin Windham gets out into soft stuff, and that front wheel, David, just washes out on him. Here comes Chad. Who's already, that's how much time they had gained on Chad already. Now, remember Glenn Helen opener when, well, he got it fired up quick. See what happens here. He's aiming for that outside run. I think he's going to lean into the corner too soon. He doesn't have anything to hold him. Boom, nice soft little fall. The bike should be fine from that, but now Carmichael's got about a 10 second lead. And Kevin's got about, you know, he's about a lifetime five or six back, seconds, yeah. Yeah, to make up to catch back up to second on Chad Reed. So it's Carmichael in first, Chad Reed second, Wyndham in third, and Clark Styles in fourth. We're back to Red Bud in a moment. Well guys, we're in between motos here and it's time for the Sobe Suzuki Fast Lap. I'm hanging out over here at the AMA Merchandise Tent. I think everybody here is psyched for Red Bud, right? Yeah, they're all having a good time. The one thing you gotta know about Red Bud is, well, it's been raining and it's really ruddy, which means a guy from California like me has a hard time getting through ruts like, oh, yo, deep. But there's also big jumps. The guys are gonna be flying. And what does it mean when you come to Red Bud? The Rocco's Leap. You guys ready to go riding? Let's go and do it! This is the beginning of the track and the start. Left-hand turn right here is the left. 
come in. You're going to have to pick your line. It's a banked right-hand turn. Been raining. Kind of soft. Slippery, slippery corners. Look at this. Pick a line. Ruts are deep. To be sliding. See the tracks. Guys, I'm moving around. Downhill. Tabletop jump. I didn't get it this time, but look at the ruts. You got to pick a line and go. Take the left-hander over double jump, then a right, and you're going to head into the uphill. Off camber, left-hand turn, drop back down into some heavy braking bumps, a right-hand turn, take you back up onto this bank turn and set up for the doubles. First up here is a triple jump, then a right-hand turn, and that's going to take you into the double-double section. Stepping up the hill, left-hand turn, little jump, back down to the right, and then another hard left turn. This is the S section, then wide open over a baby tabletop, into the ruts, a bank right, and then off left in the uphill, headed for the tabletop step down. From there, you're going to a left-hand turn. Lots of different lines here. We'll see how it shapes up. And then a right hand that's kind of tight. It takes you into the weirdest whoop section. It's uphill, and there's not really any lips. So you kind of skim the first two and try to double-double. That is, if you really are on your game. And then a hard right down the hill, and that's going to take you into LaRocco's lead. Cheating a little bit. I'm going to jump in behind Ricky Carmichael. Look how fast he goes. He's running away. LaRocco's lead. Oh, how's the whiff? He's just landing as I'm doubling. Scary. After the leap, we're going to make a hard left turn and go into a downhill tabletop and then a high banking ride into the last big jump of the track. Out of this high bank, I'll, I'll kind of pull. Look at this guy. Coming on the inside, it's a floaty tabletop to the right. That's Scott Metz, one of the privateers. You can see the track holds up on the jumps, but then you get in here in the, in the turn, the left-hander, it's rutted. And then this is going to be your final right-hand turn. Pick a clean line, tabletop coming up. Finish line, that's your Sobe Suzuki fast lap here at Red Bud. All right, thank you very much. Well done, Cameron Steele, as we are set for moto number two here at the Scott USA National, Buchanan, Michigan, and Red Bud. Todd Harris along with David Bailey, Cameron Steele, getting out of his rides as we take a look at Nathan Ramsey, who suffered an injury, David, in practice on that left hand. Uh, makes things a little dicey when the left hand's not working perfectly. You know, this whole deal's been dicey for Nathan because he just seems to be always on the comeback trail. It's too bad because he's fast enough to go out there and run up front. Suzuki's starting grid showing the usual suspects taking part in moto number two. We remind you, Ricky Carmichael was your winner in moto number one, Kevin Windham second, and Chad Reed third. But everything's on the line now for moto number two. This is the one that really counts. And David, how do you think this thing's going to play out? The track is rutted. They are set to go racing. Everyone's looking for that big hole shot. LaRocco tried to jump it, and he got a bad reaction as a result. I'd keep an eye on Tim Ferry this time. If he gets a better start, he's fast. And the worst possible scenario for everyone, number four, Ricky Carmichael gets the hole shot. And look at this. He already has a lead with Kevin Windham in tow. Much and number better. 24, Ernesto Fonseca. Ezra Lust dives in. So it's less now since the third. Yeah, I was going to say, much better start for Fonseca this time. Three Hondas up front, but he gets shuffled back a couple spots right there. Now Ricky, see, those guys protect that inside. Lust going way wide right there. He didn't have anybody breathing down his neck, though. He could afford to go out a little wider. So Ricky Carmichael out of Havana, Florida, riding for Honda. Fox at Oakley and Dunlop takes the lead. He is your winner in moto number one, looking to make a clean sweep and go one and one here. Kevin Windham, though, is right behind him. He's on that powerful four-stroke. That Honda looks very good out here at Red Bud. Windham's going to have a tough time, though, reeling in the defending champ. Yeah, he's gone with some new white gear to try to keep a little bit cooler. Look how fast Kevin went into that corner. He didn't even look like he really planned on making the burn, but he laid it over and got in there anyway. He says, hey, i got to run the pace. If I go down, I go down. I, I love that, that attitude. I mean, that's what you have to be willing to do. Lust. Beautiful line up that straightaway, riding the rear wheel. So he's trying doing all he can to try to stay with those guys, and he's still losing time. Meanwhile, Kyle Lewis, number 23, on board the Moto Triple X ride. Looks like he is dead, cannot get it kicked over. Ricky Carmichael continues to lead. This is the battle for first. Here comes Wyndham, hard charging on the outside, using all of that four stroke. Behind him, it's Yogi Ezra Lusk in third, and David Villeman sits in fourth. But this is a great battle. I know the folks at Honda want to keep both these guys safe, but for the sport of motocross, nothing better than Kevin Windham pushing Ricky Carmichael to the limits. Well, usually when you have that happen, they run away from third place. And then no matter what, they're going to get a second. That's going to be good for the points title. You're looking at one and two right here. And I'm surprised 
actually it looked like Wyndham had that hole shot and Ricky just stole it from him in the first corner. That tells you how fast that 250 is because I've talked to Kevin about his bike. He's like, you know, a 250 stock bike to a works bike is a lot of difference. And he goes, when I first rode a 450 Honda, I thought they can't make it that much better. And he goes, it is so much better and Ricky is better than that. There's your running order back to Red Bud in a moment. Welcome back to Buchanan, Michigan, round number six for the Scott USA National. We're at Red Bud. The man on the right is the one responsible for this fantastic facility. Gene Ritchie, the founder and owner of Red Bud, and he has a lot of great memories of some of the best in the business who have come through these parts, including that man, Bob Hanna. But for the hurricane, it didn't start out all that great when he came to Red Bud. Oh my God, no! My wife threw him out the first time he was here. He took his rental car there and jumped the jump, and the car had 15 miles on it. And the next thing you know, it uh, couldn't open the doors. He's trying to explain who he was, and he says, "I don't give a hell of damn who you are. Get out!" <laughs> so he got actually thrown out the first time he was here. He was thrown out, and he had to make up with Dad, and the two of them had to come up with some butt kissing scheme to get to get mom to let Bob Hanna back in the race on Sunday so <laughs> well, I haven't seen Bob kiss much butt throughout his <laughs> career so that would have been a good one unbelievable B what a great story there I started out with 15 miles and then you couldn't open the door yeah he bent that car in half meanwhile back to current racing action here in moto number two your leader continues to be Ricky Carmichael Kevin Windham sits in second and the pack is just bundled up as opposed to motor number one, David, where they're all spread out. Everyone seems to be staying together, staying in the top 10. There's Ernesto Fonseca, number 24, the Honda rider, trying to close in on number 22, Yamaha's Chad Reed. Uh, Chad smoking around the inside of that sweeper back up in the field there to put a little gap on himself and Fonseca. Looks like he's riding hard, just not up near the front. And, you know, I, I wonder what's going on with Chad. People are asking me all the time, and I... I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I think that with all, he's tasted winning. And the, the way he won at the end of the Supercross series, I just don't think that he's really that interested in giving it everything he's got to give every second of the way during this outdoor series like he was in Supercross because the care is gone. He, he can no longer win a title. Here's the look where he got around the inside of Fonseca where he was getting past the first moto. But I think knowing that the title may be out of reach right now, it, I think for a guy like Chad, he's just going, eh, just get through the season and get into next year. Meanwhile, David Villeman gets around number 11. That's Kawasaki's Ezra Lusk, who looks so good in the early going, just railing the corners, starting to taper off just a little bit, or is David Villeman picking up the pace that much more? I think judging from Villeman's lap times, he's, he's matching what the Carmichael and Wyndham are doing out front. He's the fastest rider on the track after those guys. He, got around Ezra and starting to pull away now. So it's a good run for David. We expect to see him a lot more of him up there like this, but you got to remember when he started the season outdoors, he started late. His fitness wasn't back. He had broken his back, messed up his ankle, and you know I've, I haven't talked about it that many times, so we haven't seen him that much. But I think now, with that break they had after Red or Bud's Creek coming into this round, his fitness is back where it belongs. His confidence has come along with it, and we we'll start seeing him up front more. Back to the front we go. Ricky Carmichael, your leader, but Kevin Windham on board. The Honda is right behind him, whether it's the new white gear or what, looking very good. Here's the pass one more time as we take a look at David Villeman on the inside line getting around Ezra Lusk. That's number 12 on the Yamaha, Lusk number 11 on the Kawasaki. And Ricky Carmichael is out in front, and he has put on some distance, and Kevin Windham, Windham may have gone down because he is nowhere in sight now. All it takes is a little mistake. I don't, I don't think Kevin went down. You see him back there. A couple mistakes, and that's what happens when Carmichael's in front of him. Ricky Carmichael, your leader, back to Red Bud in just a moment. And welcome back to Red Bud. This is the Scott USA National. Todd Harris along with David Bailey and Cameron Steelers. Timmy Ferry trying to close in on number 11. That's Yogi Ezra Lusk on board the Kawasaki. It looks like, oh! Tries to go for the block pass, David finds himself a bit of a rut and gets the job done. Something's weird with Ezra right there. I don't understand what he did. I mean, he, there was no reason for him to get past. He just cruised into that corner, then he cruised around the corner. Now he's charging again. So I don't know if he's just trying to make his mechanic Randy mad or 
Much Two going words. on right there, but here comes LaRocco now. Two words for you, four stroke. Timmy just dropped the throttle and just lost him. Meanwhile, Mike LaRocco, as you pointed out so correctly, is right there, takes the inside line, and Ezra once again. You know, Ezra has the experience. He knows better. Yeah, you know, it, it just maybe he's tired. Maybe the heat's getting to him or something, but he doesn't seem to be putting up any kind of a fight right now. Look, he'll let off right here. Now, go ahead, Timmy. And then he kind of did the same thing that uh, Chad Reed. You know, I gave him a little bit of a hard time in the first moto for going wide up there at the top. And that's what let Morocco by. So now this battle continues, and they've just dropped Ezra. And Villeman has dropped these guys. I'm really impressed with what Villeman's been able to do lap time-wise. the fastest rider on the track right now. And heat is usually his problem. And look at that. Mike LaRocco just bounces right in front of Timmy Ferry. So LaRocco has moved up to fourth. Tim Ferry in fifth. And as David pointed out, the Cobra, David Villeman, sits in third behind Wyndham and Ricky Carmichael. Now, this is a good fight. Timmy not really doing anything wrong there, but he did get kind of landed into the face of that last jump. Kind of abrupt, but he already knew LaRocco was coming on the inside of him, so he was trying to set up and maybe get back underneath him. As Carmichael does his own version of spectating. Is this a parade lap or is this just Honda R&D? Because they've got the Hondas out one and two. They got a little testing on the two stroke, a little testing on the four stroke. And by the way, we'll pick up a checkered flag. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, when you see Ricky on the weekend, you only see about maybe 25% of what he's got. You know, he's just riding around, it's very routine. And about 25% of the weekend, you'll see him get in a hurry. And after that, he goes back into cruise control, goes home, and rides a lot harder than what we see on the weekends. That's why this, this stuff on Sunday is so easy for him and such a routine. Nice, easy day for Mr. Gossler. He just takes it all in. No need to write anything on that pit board. Number four knows exactly what to do. So Ricky Carmichael puts it on cruise control and just lights up the track here at Redbud, picking up his fifth victory at this historic track. You know, we've run out of superlatives, David. He is just making it look too easy. You know, the thing about Ricky is the momentum, and, you know, he expects to win, and the guys that are running the second and third almost expect to be second and third. And if they can beat Ricky somehow, they act like they just won the championship. And then Ricky comes back out in the next moto and beats him again and quiets all that back down. So I don't know. I, I'm glad I'm not racing against him, I guess. Carmichael doing a little rehearsal possibly for the freestyle tour as he brings it through, giving the fans here at Red Bud a little taste of what it's like to be number one in the world. Ricky Carmichael will be your winner in moto number two, picking up the victory in moto number one. So it's a clean sweep for the young man from Havana, Florida. Ricky Carmichael, your winner. Don't forget. 93 career AMA wins for Carmichael, and he is still a young man, not even 25 years of age as of yet. As we take a look at the Honda official results, it's Carmichael going one and one. Wyndham, Villeman, Reed, and Mike LaRocca running up the top five here in moto number two. Then it's Timmy Ferry, Larry Ward, John Dowd, Ernesto Fonseca, and Ezra Lusk rounding out your top ten. Right now, let's send it down to Cameron Steele, who is with Ricky Carmichael, your winner in moto number two. Well, guys, Ricky Carmichael continues to tear everybody apart. Ricky, unbelievable ride. The no foot of can, styling it at the end. Just throwing a little freestyle there. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call that freestyle, dude. I am terrible at that stuff. But uh, I try to have a little bit of fun and give the uh, give the fans something they want to see. And, man, I feel awesome today. I tell you what, Kevin was on my tail for over half the moto. And, uh, he was making me work for it, but I kept on that pace, kept on that pace, and uh, I was question it was questionable for me if he was going to be able to hold that pace, and luckily uh, I spit him off, and uh, the rest was history. On the track, slippery spots. You got to watch yourself. You're leading the race. You really do have to be careful, don't you? Ah, uh, definitely. You know, the, I, I think this track was four-stroke heaven. You know, it's uh, really like deep. And those things have so much torque, it just pulls right out of there. And then uh, hard pack, and those things are uh, immaculate on hard pack. But, uh, you know, I was able to uh, ride as hard as I could and keep them guys behind me. He, Kevin was right, up, right beside me on the start, and I had to close the door on him because I really didn't want to eat roost the whole time. And uh, it was awesome. It was a nice move. I saw a great job today, Ricky. Ah, thanks a lot. Definitely, uh, you know, i got to thank Honda, Oakley Fox, uh, my trainer, Eldon Baker, and, uh, you know, everybody that ha has helped me get here. It's just awesome. Thanks, Ricky. All right, thank you very much, Cameron Steele. Congratulations to Ricky Carmichael. As we take a look 
at the official overall results. It's Carmichael going one and one. Wyndham gets the two and two. And rounding out the top three is Chad Reed. So a great weekend for Chad Reed, but a better weekend for Ricky Carmichael. I don't dare call it struggling, but you haven't been winning. Is this a result of the Supercross season where you were winning and you kept testing all the way through Supercross, where most guys are already testing outdoors? Are you playing a little bit of catch up on the testing? Yeah, you know, everybody says that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm better at Supercross. And it's it's half true. It's uh, it's one of the things that come very natural to me. I've always had a track since I was nine years old. So outdoors is, uh, you know, a little tougher. And I think uh, not having a bike set up coming into the season, we ride the Wild Cup, and I ride on the four stroke, and it was a completely different bike. So it was one of those things that we're just chasing something. But uh, all the guys at Yamaha, Thor, Pass and Lumen, Scott and Bridgestone, they all been helping me out, and you know, week by week, to get better. We'll see you at the next round, Chad. See that, Cam. Thanks. Well done, Chad Reed. As we take a look at the overall standings, it's Ricky Carmichael out in front. 59-point lead over Kevin Windham. Chad Reed sits in third, 70 points back. Moments ago, Cameron Steele caught up with Kevin Windham down on the podium. Well, Kevin, that's a great ride at 2-2 for second overall. I want to ask you, though, if you hadn't tipped over in the first moto and dinged your pipe and maybe cost yourself a little bit of horsepower there, would it have been a different day? I don't know. You know, that's one thing I want to start working on. I, I rode better uh, trying to work up to him than, than I did whenever I was right there with him. I need to just calm down a little bit. Um, I, I was getting, like, lock in my arm, you know, from like, being a little bit dehydrated. And, uh, unfortunately, I had to just kind of ride around, you know. I kind of... Whenever you get out there and you get a little thing that bothers you, you know, like like you can't ride, you know, 100%, you're either going to back it down or you're going to go down. And I had enough of that in the first mode. Well, we remind you that the Troy event has been tentatively rescheduled for September 6th and 7th. Check your local schedules. And upcoming races, we're in New Berlin, New York on the 19th, Washubel on the 26th, and Minnesota August 16th and 17th. Well, a great weekend of racing here at Red, but on behalf of my associates, Cameron Steele and the champ, David Bailey, I'm Todd Harris saying so long from Buchanan, Michigan, and the Scott USA National from Red Bud. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long from Red Bud.